the recitation and memorization of the Qur'an is one of the greatest aspirations that every single one of us, man, woman, Arab, non-Arab, should have as an aspiration to become from those who are guardians of the word of Allah, hafiz of the Qur'an. Hafiz doesn't mean memorizer of the Qur'an alone, it means protector, guardian, that you protect it from the changes, alterations of mispronunciations, uh, misunderstandings that may have arisen in the thoughts and minds and recitations of people. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us accompanying the Qur'an and the Qur'an accompanies us in this life so that it can accompany us into our grave and on the day of judgment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that sahibul Qur'an, the one who is a companion of the Qur'an, they will not have any sadness or sorrow sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That it is mu'nisun fil wahsha, that when we are in isolation, it becomes our best friend. That when we are buried in our grave, it is al-jalisu salih, it will be Someone who will sit with you in your grave, sit with you in the confines of the next life, waiting for the judgment of Allah to come. It is the reason of the brightness of faith, uh, face on the day of judgment. May Allah brighten our face with the reading of the Quran. Did you know that every ayah of the Quran that you read and recite and memorize correctly will be a higher level in Jannah that you ascend? Did you know that the reading of the Quran is the, one of the quickest ways for you and I to amass a massive amount of reward? That for every letter of the Quran, not ayah, not verse, not surah, not juz, for every letter of the Quran, Quran, Alif, Lam, Meme, Alif on its own, Lam on its own, Meme on its own. Each of them is a letter, each of them is given a reward multiplied by 10 at minimum. And it could be even up to 700 if you're struggling with it. And that's where you get the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. In the hadith of Imam Muslim, الذي يقرأ القرآن the one who is معسفرت الكرام البررة The one who is fluent in the reading of the Quran is at the level of the angels on the day of judgment. وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَيُتَعْتِعُ يَتَتَعْتِعُ فِيهِ Reads the Qur'an, stumbles in it, messes up some of the readings and is struggling to learn it better and better each and every day. لَهُ أَجْرَانَ Will have double the reward, twice the reward, two times the reward. It's not just one to, a, to ten, it could be a hundred, two hundred, seven hundred times. In comparison to the one who reads it with fluency, they can imagine a massive amount of reward because it's difficult for them. It's a, it's a journey. And therefore the reading of the Qur'an, the memorization of the Qur'an has always been the pursuit of every Muslim. It must always be returned to you and I in our heart that the Qur'an is an aim for myself and you to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a dhikr al-hakim, the wisest remembrance in scripture. It is the protection in this dunya and akhirah. It is the words that we read to protect ourselves spiritually and physically from ailment. Shifa'un lima sudur. It is a healing to what troubles the heart. It is a healing to the illnesses of the body. Awwalu shay'in hajarna به القرآن أننا لا نتداوى به. The uh, Imam Ibn Qayyim says of the ways that we've uh, uh, turned away from the Quran is that we don't seek to cure our life and our reasons with it. That we don't seek a healing through the Book of Allah. It is begun with the Fatiha and ends with a Nas. It begins with an opening and continues with the final chapter which is about our relationship with Allah as humanity. I ask Allah to protect me. He is the protector of, of His creation, humanity. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is the Quran significant? Because it is the word of Allah that has been revealed upon Muhammad Sallallahu that when you recite it, you earn reward and no other text earns a reward. No other book that is ever read earns you a reward like it. It is brought down by Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is collected in the Mus'haf today as a part of our belief and it is muta'abbadun bitilawati. It is something that has been shared with us and has been conveyed to us in so many 
oral traditions and uh, writings that is undeniable. It is not a book of science, but it is a book of wisdom. And you will find allusions to science in it, that which we have discovered and that which is yet to be discovered. But it's not meant to be read like a journal. It's meant to be read to affect our life and bring change and to give us clarity in times of hardship and darkness. In the Quran are parables and examples that give us hope and patience and resilience and and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you and I to make this commitment that each and every day there will be a new verse, each and every day there will be a new attempt that either we learn to read it and memorize it or learn to understand it. And do not ever be dissuaded by the fact that you might not understand the Quran because you're non-Arab in nature. In fact, I'll give you a secret as an Arab that there is a vast majority of the Quran that when Arabs read it, they don't understand it. The Quran is in a newspaper. Why else do you think we have something called tafsir? Why is there Tafsir ibn Kathir and Al-Qutubi and Tabari and, uh, and, and others. Why? Because the Quran is not self-evident in all of its different perspectives. Minhu ayatu muhkamat. Some of its verses are clear-cut and easy to understand. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. It doesn't matter which language of the world everybody understands it. But mutashabihat, there are verses that are ambiguous, hidden, not many people will be able to understand it and requires training and knowledge and study to understand its meanings. That's why you have extremists who will twist the meaning of the Quran to their agenda and you will have people who are usurpers of the knowledge who will twist the meaning of the Quran to dilute it and water it down to make it seem like it says something that it doesn't actually say. And both of them, both examples are extremists in their pursuit of the knowledge that is the super Sunnah in the practice of the Qur'an. Center yourself with the reading of the Book of Allah. Be familiar with it. Establish a wird, a regular daily reading, a regular daily amount you memorize, a, da- a regular daily reading of its meaning, and a regular daily acquaintance of its interpretation. And I hope that Allah can allow us to contribute towards that for your betterment and ours and our families. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَزِدْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا وَنَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Your brother Yahya Ibrahim. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.